ان الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستكفيه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له رب العزه والجلاله الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الإسلام وتعدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات ربنا وسلامه عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته الغر الميامين ومن بهداهم اقتدى إلى يوم الدين ونسل الله جل في علاه يجعلنا معهم وفي زمرتهم إنه بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم أما بعد فمعشر المسلمين والمسلمات أوصيكم كما أوصي نفسي المذنبة أولا بتقوى الله عز وجل في السر والعلن Indeed, all praises to Allah. We praise Him and thank Him, seek assistance from Him and take refuge with Him against the wrong of ourselves and against the evil of our actions. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone, creator uncreated, without partner, without son, without sharer in His dominion. And I testify that Muhammad is the seal of His messengers and the last of His prophets, sent with guidance for all of humanity until the end of days. Upon Him, his noble household and companions, his brother messengers before him, and all who aspire to seek the way of messengers and tread in their footsteps after him with the fullest of peace and complete blessings. Servants of Allah, I remind you as I remind myself to hold fast to his remembrance. Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, two hearts find rest. Allah Jalla wa Allah has names and attributes and he is the majestic king, the king of kings. And in his presence, All faces are downcast in the presence of the living, ever subsisting creator. A day comes when every pretense to sovereignty, to power, strength, authority, influence, all of these things disappears. We are restored to being the nothingness from whence we first come. We are restored to being of a sum value of zero. And he says, who today is king? Whose is the kingdom? And there is silence. And he responds, God alone. The one, the indomitable, the overwhelming. He overwhelms all things. Sometimes we think that bad things are happening and bad people are getting away with doing bad things and there is injustice and there is bloodshed and there is evil and there's tyranny and there's despotism and there's, and there's suffering and there's sickness and there are broken hearts and there are tears. And Allah Azza wa Jalla addresses this in lots of places to remind us never to allow our subjectivity as creatures bound in time and place. We're, we're trapped here and now. And I can see what's ahead of me and I'm blind to what's right behind me and it's exactly the same for you. Never let your subjectivity blind you to the totality of what is with Allah. For us this is everything. For him it's not even a blip in a, a moment in time, a speck of dust. And so Allah says, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِيكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ You really thought you'd get to walk into Jannah. When nothing like the trials and tribulations that came to those before you has yet touched you. مَسَّتُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ They were stricken with grief and with suffering, with war and calamity and pain. وَزُلْزِلُوا And shaken to their very core. حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا مَعَهُ بَتَى نَصُرُ اللَّهُ Until even messengers and the faithful around messengers, we, we, we are believers. But Allah Azza wa Jal chooses of all, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Allah looked throughout the hearts of creation and picked the very best and the finest and purest of them 
to be the hearts of his Anbiya. And then he looked throughout the rest of creation and picked the very best of the hearts from those that remained to be the companions of the Anbiya. And he said, Allah chose for this, uh, the Anbiya companions just like he chose the Anbiya themselves. And Allah says of this, the, 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 the purest and most beautiful of hearts in his presence. <laughs> Until even messengers, they were shaken so much and tried and tested with tribulation to such a point that messengers and the believers around them, with them, began to say, Mata Nasrullah, when will it come? Allah's promise. Not that there's a doubt for a moment in its truth, but an expression of, this is getting tough for me. We're, we're struggling here. Ya Rab. And Allah consoled them. Ala inna nasrallahi qareeb. Let it be enough that God's help is always near. Even if you don't get to see it in your subject, subjective existence, maybe you'll live and die and you'll never see that. Are there people in Burma right now, Myanmar, the Rohingya, who are fleeing things that we can't even begin to imagine? And yet things that our smartphone screens are being inundated with, things that we're seeing and having to turn our eyes away from, are they not fleeing? from some of the most horrendous, I mean, a, a twisted horror film director couldn't come up with some of the brutality that's been meted out to women, to children, to babies, to pregnant mothers, to elderly men. And this is happening in the 21st century, it's happening, and it's a beautiful, glorious, bright day here, it's happening, and the world media talks about it, makes a few noises and moves on, but, and yet, it is true, let it be enough for you to know, God's help is near. His help isn't distant. And He is close to the hearts of those I am there with those whose hearts are broken. I am there where I know their pain and their suffering. We created man, we know what his soul whispers to him. And I am closer to you, we are closer to him than the very jugular vein that keeps you alive or conscious. Allah tells us that. He comes between you and your own heart. No, Allah comes between man, woman, the human being, and his or her own heart. And so we're flabbergasted. We're like, what, what, but what's happening? And he is the indomitable power. Of, yes, but everything has a time with him. The messenger said when his grandson was, was, about, was breathing his last, a baby, and his daughter sent someone to her father, tell my father his grandson is dying, tell my father my child is in his last moments. The very first thing he says when he hears these words, before he stands up to go to his grand to his daughter, the very first thing he says, he reminds himself, he reminds everybody around him, and reminds everybody who will ever hear this hadith. To God belongs what he takes. And his is what he gave. Normally we'd say it the other way around. We'd say, Allah gives and Allah takes. But he began with the taking because that's the immediate. When he takes, it's, it hurts. We feel aggrieved. We feel pain. We're suffering. All suffering is about the loss of something. It's the loss of wealth. It's the loss of loved one. It's the loss of health. It's the loss of maybe uh, status or privilege. It's your faith or belief in somebody else. It's, it's the loss of a thing. But all things are his to take back. Why? Because it was he that gave. If I give you my phone and then I say, can I have it back now? You can't, you can't say, oh, but why? No, I, it's mine. I gave it to you. I lent it to you. I was being generous and said, here, use my phone. But a few moments later, I want it back. And you will hand it back graciously. And most of the time, we'll, we'll thank the person as he takes it back for having given it to us at all. We're grateful that, because I have no entitlement, no right to it. He 
He reminds himself of this. Inna lillahi ma akhadha wa lahu ma a'ata. It is his what he takes, for it was his what he gave. Wa kullu shayin indahu ila ajli musamma. And everything, the good, but also the painful and the bad, and the heart hurtful and the 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 the, the heartbreaking, all things with him are to a fixed time. They have a time, and this time will pass. And it's the judgment that is with Allah that has to be, that is forever. It is the outcome that matters. The process is, is momentary. It is the outcome that we focus on. We don't allow the process to blind us to that. Because then we've become lost in the moment. We've become the kuffar, the Quran relates that the disbelievers will say, وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهْرَ إِنْ هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا Life of this world is just that. We live, we die, and only time will be the end of us. Time passes, we die, and that's the end. You're born, you live, you die, that's the end. The Quran relates this and, 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 and talks of them, speaks of them as foolish people. Because they confuse the process, this momentary journey, sojourn through time, as being the goal. The journey is never the destination. The journey is necessary, it's necessary. But it's not the destination. It's the destination that matters that you have to keep your eye on. This is the month of Muharram, and a part of the greatness, and a part of the majesty of that king is he's not... Most people begin to panic when you have a big day happening. It's your wedding day. It's your son's wedding day, your daughter's wedding day. It's a great day, something's happening. You've done everything you possibly can to make sure nothing goes wrong for that day. And if anything did go wrong, then you have to have a contingency in place, or how can you do damage limitation? Allah has part of His majesty is he gives rise to civilizations, he'll bring others crashing down, they'll be, the, 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 the great are reduced to lowness and the, the, the low were made to rise. All of this happens and Allah says about great nations of the past, And their Lord brought crashing down upon them, their destruction and leveled them. And he was not in the slightest afraid of its consequences. He is al ghani He's so without need. It's okay. And the reason I mention this, this is the month of Muharram. The messenger referred to it as Shahrullah al-Muharram, God's sacred month. Its name is the sacred, the sanctified, the inviolable. You can't violate this, the sanctity of this month. That's what it's called. And yet it's in this month, on the first of Muharram, Umar ibn al-Khattab leaves this world assassinated as he leads the people in prayer. The one that Messenger said, if there were to be a prophet after me, Lakana Umar. It is in this month that al Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, karramallahu wajha wa radiyallahu an ahlil bayti wa ardahum. The grandson of the Messenger of Allah, and what he, whom he described as my fragrant flower, Al Hassan Wal Husin, Huma Rehana Tay, they are my two fragrant flowers. Shababu Ahli Jan Sayyid Shababi Ahli Jannah. And they will be the liege lords of all of the youth of Jannah. Um, he and his entire family, including the children and the women, are all cut down to pieces in this month. And this is the month of Muharram. It is the month of great sanctity. And yet Allah Azza wa Jal allows the very, very best of people in his eyes. If that is to, to happen to them, then he'll allow it to happen in the very most sacredest, the most sacred of, of months. Because the gains of the people of this world are of no consequence to him. His master plan extends over all things. And this is important to remember because sometimes we are human beings and we're subjective and we can't help but be 
part of the context of our time and space, children of our circumstances, products of our society and times. And so we can become very invested in this person or that speaker or this ummah or that nation. Or, and then we're distraught and heartbroken when, when bad things happen, whether they're of people's own making or of somebody else's doing, whether it's... We can be torn apart because of that. And it's because we forgot this is always for Allah. Every caller who called and called to Allah, it is Allah that mattered. And that's the point of our attachments. In the month of Muharram, the most sacredest of months, the, the most sacred of months, Allah Azza wa Jal, the, he, the Prophet came sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he, he found the people, the, the Jewish community fasting and honoring this month and he asked them about that and they said this is according to our tradition at the time that God delivered the Israelites from Pharaoh. He said, نَحْنُ bi مُسَمِينَ مِنْكُمْ We have much, a, a greater right to, to, to Musa alayhi salam, to Moses than you. And so he fasted the 10th of Muharram. And they asked him, and he fasted, and somebody asked him about that in, in the hadith, in the Sahih of Muslim. He said, كَفَارَةٌ لِلْسَنَةِ الْمَاضِيَةِ it will expiate, wipe away the sins of the past year. In one hadith, in Muslim, narration of uh, Abu Hurairah, the Prophet said, أَفْضَلُ السِّيَامِ بَعْدَ رَمَضَانْ شَهْرُ اللَّهِ مُحَرَّمِ The very best of fast after Ramadan are the fasts that are done in this sacred month of Muharram. The very greatest single day is the day of Arafat, which is in the month that's just ended. But the, the best month to fast as a whole, after Ramadan is, the Messenger said, Shahr Allah al-Muharra. It is this sacred month of his. And the sanctity of the month, like Allah Azza wa Jal, His Majesty, the sanctity of the month is separate to and not in the least affected by the unsacred actions of people. Whether it is the cutting down of the best of people that have ever lived, whether it is the massacring of an innocent and helpless community, this month is sacred and we have a duty in its sanctity. And then we have an obligation to feel deeply about and not simply be momentary observers when we flick onto a news channel and there's something about the Rohingya Muslims and we make uh, you know, appropriate noises of, of, of sympathy and then you move on to something else and it's a comedy channel and so you can sit back and, and, and laugh. We, have, we owe it to see mothers who could have been ours because what right, what privilege, what, what entitlement did we have? That we should enjoy security. This is a time right now when in some places an entire nation community is being hacked out to the ground. In other places Entire communities are being swallowed up into the ground. In other places, winds and hurricanes and storms and flooding is devastating communities. This, these are times of strife. I'm not talking conspiracy theory here. I'm talking about what's going on in the world. And people can attribute things to whatever. There's only one cause for all things, and that is Allah Jalla wa Ala. And yet, whilst all of this goes on, it's a nice, bright, relatively warm day for us here and life is good when life is good whilst everywhere else there is mayhem you need to be worried because perhaps we're in the eye of the storm when a hurricane hits it's the eye of the hurricane that is the most calm and all around it and that calmness is deceptive because it's not long-lived very soon it will continue its course and then the moment that enjoyed calmness for a, for a while will also experience devastation. Brothers and sisters, these are the, the, Nuh alayhi salam, in Surah Nuh, it, his, his call to his people is recorded to be a lesson for all of us. He pleads with them, rabbakum. I said, please, turn to your Lord and seek forgiveness. He's forgiving. Do it, it's good, it's okay, because he's greatly forgiving. 
And if you do, everything will become okay again. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا He'll send waters down in abundance. وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالِهِ وَبَنِينَ Rain to bring crops. And then he'll increase you in your in, in offspring, in wealth. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتِ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا Gardens and rivers will flow for you. He'll do all of this. Everything becomes right. Turn back to Allah. And that is the most basic and fundamental request. This is a sacred month. These are sacred times. And through all of history, this minha arba'atun hurum. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Inna idha tashuru inda Allah ithna ashara shahran yom khalaqa samawati wal ar minha arba'atun hurum. Months with God are twelve from the day He created heaven and earth. Four of these are sacred. Muharram is the first of these sacred months. And yet, he allows great tragedies and atrocities to happen. It doesn't diminish from the sanctity, but it condemns those who will condemn themselves. And it gives eternal life. Imam uh, Zamakhshari narrates about uh, a person who walked past at the time of Hajjaj ibn Yusuf and he saw bodies hanging from trees. And, they, and he saw the body of a righteous man. He'd seen him giving people flocking to him to learn hadith and, and a person of great piety and righteousness and his body's hanging from, 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 from trees and in his heart this person says oh Allah your patience with the aggressors is really hurting the, the righteous the righteous are suffering because you're being too patient with the and people say that sometimes Look at these great despots, look how long they live, look how long tyrants continue to rule a country. Good men seldom stay for long. The bad ones, they're doing 40 years of running the country. Good ones, you're lucky if you get four or five. So he says, Allahumma inna sabraka bil musi'een, al dabra bil muhsineen. Lord, your patience with the evildoers is really hurting the righteous. That night he goes to sleep and he sees the dream. And in his dream he sees like the trumpet is blown and, jam and Yom Al-Qiyamah has begun. And he, as he's, everyone's assembling for judgment, he can see a, a lofty rank and lofty couches raised high. And there you have the elect. And when he looks up there he sees the man who he saw hanging from the tree the day before. And he's raised up and he's glowing and he's full of... He's, he's been raised to the most honorable station and, in the, and he hears a voice and the voice announces my patience with the wrongdoers has raised the righteous to the highest of heights. Sabri bil musi'in ahalla al muhsinina a'la illiyin. Don't think I'm patient with the wrongdoers because I want to hurt my righteous servants. I will raise them liyattakhida minkum shuhada. The Quran says, because he wanted to make martyrs out of some of you, raise you to the highest palaces of Jannah. So when Allah allows evil to happen, he allows the condemned to condemn themselves. And he raises far higher than anyone could imagine the righteous. And then he puts all of the rest of us to a terrible challenge, a test. Either we're silent and we're concerned with our own family and food and job and work and lifestyle, or we care. We respond to the call of humanity and we fall before Allah, number one, and beg his forgiveness, recognizing we have a role in the atrocities that take place in our times. They're not just about soldiers in that country or a government in, in another. They, they are a reflection of our collective state. So we beg to him, Ya Rab, help bring, restore to us a sense of your sanctity in this sacred month of Muharram. Allow our hearts to seek you and to be in awe of you. Allow, allow us to fear you again. I don't stay away from haram in my everyday, day-to-day -day life. If Allah's not big enough to keep me from haram. Abu Huraira narrates the messenger said when somebody asked him, what is taqwa? He said, he said, whoever says, la ilaha illallah mukhlisan dakhal al jannah. The Prophet had said, whoever says there is no God but Allah with true sincerity, he's going to heaven. And somebody said, Ma ikhlasuha ya Rasulullah. What is its what is its sincerity? What does that truly mean though? To sincerely say there is no God but Allah. He said, and that, that becomes a barrier between you and the things that God has forbidden to you. So if I said the words, but my actions fall be, below that, then I have to the, the same lack of God consciousness 
that isn't protecting me from haram is ultimately the same thing that's not stopping a, aggressors commit atrocity. May Allah Azza wa Jal restore us to a state of consciousness. We're in a journey and people sometimes we become we become embroiled in worldly things and as I've said that can be terrible disasters, it can be wonderful individuals and we have to try to transcend that and place our hope. Allah Azza wa Jal places one place to place hope. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ in the Messenger of God is a beautiful example for the one who places his hope in Allah. There's one place to place your hope. Place your hope in Allah and you're not let down. Place your hope in anybody else. A nation state, a righteous or articulate scholar, a community, an organize in anybody else and ultimately will be, will be let down. If people place their hope in the righteousness of the best of people, they were hurt physically in this world. Place your hope in Allah and He will always carry through. <laughs> وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز واهتدى ومن يعصيه ما فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا عباد الله رحمكم الله إن ربكم يأمركم يمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثن بملائكته المسبحة بقدسه وثلث بكم تكريما وتشريفا وإعزازا فقال عز بن قائل مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم فصل وسلم وزد وبارك على حبيبك وخير خلقه نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأزواجه وذريته وصحابته ومن بهداه مقتدى إلى يوم الدين وجعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين اللهم نفس كرب المكروبين وفرج هم المهمومين وفك أسر المأسورين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين وعاف مبتلانا يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين رجالا ونساء وولدانا اللهم انصرهم يا عزيز يا مقتدر اللهم انصرهم وخذ المعتدين أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم أرنا فيهم عجائب قدرتك اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين سوءا وشرا وكيدا ومكرا فجعل كيده في نحبه وأشغله بنفسه وأرنا فيهم عجائب قدرتك يا رب العالمين زلزل تحت أقدامهم أرضهم وشتد شملهم ومزق جمعهم وأنزل عليهم بأسك الذي لا يرد عن القوم الظالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباقي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله الجليل يذكركم وادعوه يستجيب لكم وقوموا إلى صلاتكم رحمكم الله